Hey there, guys. And we're back to doing this. We got a retrial. And yeah, I, I was gonna try finishing this a lot sooner, but apparently my hard drive decided, hey, let's have a conniption. And then my Windows decided, hey, let me join in on that party. It sounds like fun. Yeah, it wasn't a lot of fucking fun for me. Yep, there goes the swearing again. God damn it. Anyway, we got a retrial out of Monokuma. But now the stakes are higher, we have to sort out all the secrets of Hope's Peak. And he opened up everything for us so that we could do that. I'm not sure how Kyoko completely managed this shit, but damn, she's a negotiator. So the first place I feel like we should go check out is the second floor dormitories that I remember there were stairs near the warehouse around here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Oh. God, I reinstalled this game and I feel like it's much more sensitive than it used to be. Uh, I think this is it. One way to find out. Let's see what's up here. Oh, it is new! The gate's open. We can finally check out the second floor of the dorms. Which means... I have to do it. Let's go. Whoa. What the hell happened here? Uh, okay. This is the second floor of the dorms? It looks like some ancient ruins. Or no, it's more like a battlefield. Like a bomb blew up here or something. Yeah, um, one, one minor note. Things may be a little bit more sensitive on my mic because uh, for some reason OBS is like, hey, your mic is so much more sensitive now. You like it? You like it? That's blood. That's blood. No, 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 no. Wait, what does this floor even look like? So I have only certain rooms I can check in on? What's on here then? Holy shit, this place looks trashed. Wow, okay. Let's see what's in here. Are those bullet holes? Okay, so I can only check the door and the bed. Okay. The bed is completely torn apart. I mean, it's not even really a bed anymore. It's just garbage. I don't want the coins! I want the story! Stop giving me coins, I don't want them. I open the door just to crack, glance inside and immediately close it again. There wasn't even a hint of a bathroom, just a big pile of rubble. At least it wasn't a dead body. <clears throat> yeah, let's leave. Damn, man. Okay, I know I've said it probably before that the school is messed up, but this is even worse than normal. This is a girl's bathroom. Even in a place like this, I can't bring myself to go in. Yeah, that's where yeah, I would probably be like, you know what, I need to find out stuff. Why is there an Egyptian eye over there? Uh, okay. <clears throat> um, okay, so there's nothing of note in here. Ooh, that's actually kind of pretty. Anyway, let's get out. There, there's nothing in here, apparently. What the hell is with this? I symbol over there. Wait a minute. So there's this big room here, and then there's two rooms back there. Alright, let's check this out then. Let's see what's in here. Oh, wow. This room is filled with lockers. It must have been for the Hope's Peak students who came before us. The class before ours must have used these lockers. I don't know, man. Oh, that's so much to check. Well, let's start in the line. There's a plan- Yeah, it, it, I have to fuck up the English language at least once, at least once. And if we're lucky, it's gonna happen multiple times. There's a metal plate mounted to the locker. Up oh, there, a second. I really want to know what's inside, but there's no way. Can I- how did I get the coin out of that? Excuse me? Damn, this one's trashed. 
I can't imagine any way to get this locker open. I'm not even gonna bother trying. This one? Oh, so it just goes all the way to that. Okay. So I can choose this close one. I wonder if I can open this locker. Nope. Locked. <laughs> We're at the same words. There's a card reader installed on the door. That must be how you get the locker open. After all, it's pretty similar to the card readers for the locker rooms on the second floor of the school. And you have to use your e-handbook to open the, those up. So does that mean... Well, let's just give it a try. I took out my handbook and ran it across the card reader. And then... No luck. Maybe only the locker's owner can open it. Which means none of us can do it? I don't know, Nate. In Makoto, maybe you should try more than just one. I wonder if I can open this locker. Nope, locked. There's a card reader installed. That must be how you get the locker open after all. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna skip through that because it's gonna be the same text. Alright, let's turn the camera so long. Let's see if we get another Monokuma po bleh, coin. Bleh. No. Wow, stingy. It's looks like it looks like this locker is already broken. But there are a few more with card readers we can check out. Yeah. It's it's kind of silly you get the same text every time, but that's fine, I guess kind of adds to the whole thing of the game. Nope, not that one. No luck. Maybe... This one? I mean... This school has been seen... Well, we've seen some pretty fucked up stuff happen in this school, so... I kind of feel like it doesn't help for me to say nothing will surprise me anymore because... Yeah, something probably fucking will. Oh, can I look at this? No, it just goes back to this. No, let me out, let me out, let me out. I want out. No, 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 no. Haha! -ha! I've discovered the power of the B button. I wonder if I can open this locker. Yeah, and if anyone's wondering, I used to record Danganronpa at 60 frames per second, but I've got some plans with games for October. And literally, my OBS went, nope, encoding error, I can't do this at 60 frames. So I'm back to doing it at 30 frames with some rather weird settings, but hey, they work. It's the same, so expect the same quality of stuff or video as with when I played Doom Eternal. So I do apologize for that, but I got a potato PC. Uh, I hope you guys stay for the entertainment. Hey! Oh look, another card reader. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of figured that'll be a no-go. Right, but... Uh, well, technically we only have one left. The others are busted. Let's check it out. Aha, the power of the bee. No. That does bring up an interesting question. You know what? I'm going to leave these for now. I wonder. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to... Um... Nah, let's go do it. Let's go do it. Can I run? How do... Aha! B! There we go. B, B's the B's the letter today, kids. So, I kind of want to figure out like if it reads card readers the handbooks i kind of want to find out about those card readers in here shit not where i wanted to go go back wait is this where i wanted to be no i'm gonna head back i need to see where God fucking damn it, I can't remember where I saw that. It's gotta be somewhere around here. It's where the front door is. 
I remember that much. Second floor, no, no. Aha, I think this way. Uh, I think it's in here. There we go. Because remember everyone had, all the people who already died had their ebooks put in here. The handbooks of all the students who have died have been in place. You're all dead because of the mastermind. I can't take it? No! For a second I was like, can't I use those and see if any of those might open up the lockers? I guess not. The, I don't know, maybe I'm just getting ahead of the game? And that's something you can maybe do? The game cannot contain my brain. Yes, I messed with the sound. Should be. Because, once more, I have to kind of go look for all my settings again. The pressing. Alright. So, I can't access any of the lockers in there. I'm curious about that though. Why is, why is there an Egyptian eye over there and a giraffe on the door over there? God, this is a lot of blood. What happened in here? I hope this room has some answers, because God. Wait a minute. Why is this room basically untouched? This room doesn't really feel like a student's room. It has more adult atmosphere. It has a more adult atmosphere. Wow, I made that sound rather dirty, but Correct. I didn't mean it. Oh! Hey! It's a headmaster's private room. Kyoko. Indeed. I've been through this room several times already, but I still have one little regret. So I decided to check it out one more time. A regret? Uh... Okay. Interesting. Oh wow, I like how it's already on something over there. That's not much of a thing. It's like a concealed fucking door. I can see it from here. Let's check out the computer though. There's a PC on the desk. It must have belonged to the headmaster. It would seem... Whoever uses last, it looks like they were very interested in the ultimate despair. The PC still has some search results left on it. Then we might be able to get some info on the ultimate despair. However... There is not much, though. Nothing we don't really know. In other words... The ultimate despair isn't one individual, but instead points to some kind of group. Oh shit. That group is responsible for the tragedy which happened one year ago. They're the worst sorts of people whose driving force comes from despair. However... And that's all there is. Not much to it, is there? Whew. But I guess that's the best he could do as a complete Kirigiri failure. Wow! 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 But any information about the mastermind is helpful, right? I appreciate whatever info we can get our hands on. Correct. I see. That's a good outlook to have. Oh boy. And since the game isn't doing a great job of concealing that... Ah, uh, there's a strange gap in the wall. Is it some kind of a design mistake or a construction defect or something? So... There's a gap here, but not just any normal gap. I can feel a breeze coming out. A breeze? Indeed. There's likely an open space on the other side of this wall. Open space? Does that mean... You mean like a hidden room? I think I might know how to open it. Ooh. You know how to open it? Did you figure out some kind of trick or something? Indeed. A very easy trick, yes. So easy, I'm not sure you can even call it a trick. I saw a program on that PC that I think controls it. Enter the right password and the door should open right up. However... But I don't have a clue what that password might be. All I know is it's probably made up of letters and or numbers. We can't really go from there. You're right. That's not really enough to go on. It's true. I looked through all his paperwork. All the files on the PC, everything I could think of. I learned more about him than I had any desire to, but nothing that might have been his password. Ooh. When I think of how much time I wasted on this... Hmm... Hmm... Jeez. 
So there's a hidden room she couldn't get into. That's what she meant by regret. I think we can assume that there must be some kind of clue waiting in there. But maybe for her, there is more to it than that. Anyway, if we want to go in there, we need to figure out the password. And if Kyoko can figure it out, no way do I stand a chance. No way, there might be a chance. The password could be something Kyoko wouldn't have thought of, or something she didn't want to think of. For example, what about your name? What? Oh, sorry, I was just trying to think of what the password might be. Ooh, I'm sure she hasn't tried it. I mean, it's totally understandable. After the way she talked about her dad, the idea that- uh, poo, poo, The idea that he would use her name as his password. Knowing how she is, I bet the idea never even occurred to her. Um, do you mind if I just try it? Just to be sure? Well? It's not like you need my permission. Why is it that whenever I start recording, especially a game like this where I talk a lot, or have to talk a lot because I'm reading, I just keep getting freaking phlegm in my throat. It sucks. Because I have to mute my mic every time just to clear my throat, otherwise you guys will hear that constantly. It's not like you need my permission. If you want to try it, try it. Do whatever you want. Okay. Let's try this again. You know, I'm glad I thought of trying Kyoko's name. But if that's not it, that might just hurt Kyoko even more. Hmm. Hey. If you're worried about me, Makoto, don't be. I already know that your guess is wrong. Okay. In that case, here goes nothing. I collected myself, then turned to face the computer monitor. Let me just type the password here. I typed in her full name, Kyoko Kirigiri. My hands were tense, slightly trembling, and as I finished typing it in... Oh shit! What? Okay, that actually worked? Well, I mean, I guess her dad probably had his own regrets about not being with Kyoko more often or something. I mean, it would make sense. That did it? Kyoko, it worked! Uh oh Why? Oh... Hey, Kyoko? Without looking at me, she disappeared into the hidden room. She looked... grim. Kyoko? Oh, shit. Damn, okay. This is... This is actually kind of rough, because we got to know her as this stone hard person and everything and now she's faced with a situation where her emotions might get the better of her hey kyoko i may as well ha not even have been in the room her gaze was fixed on only one thing a present wrapped and covered with such joy that's what made it so unusual okay you know what, I think I'm going to start with the obvious part and start there, because he still kept his picture of her. I better check out that suspicious present before I do anything. Wow. Thanks, game. There's a brightly colored box here. It seems totally out of place in here. The more I look at it, the more suspicious I get. Yeah? You're not the only one. Should we open it? I'm getting kind of a bad vibe from it. If it's in this school... Yeah, bad vibe is just par for the course. But I mean, we can't not open it. Okay. Makoto. Be careful, Makoto. Why? You think it's dangerous? No, it's not dangerous. But surprising, probably. Wow. Huh? It would seem... If it is what I think it is, at the very least, it's not something you'll be happy to see. Considering everything else in the school, uh, you think? Wait, so you know what's in there? Anyway... Just don't scream or anything, okay? Wow. Are you saying it's something that'll make me want to scream? Okay, I'm just gonna open it! Step by heavy step, I approached the box. I took a deep breath, then took hold of the lid. Slowly, ever so slowly, I lifted it up, and I hope the music goes quiet like that because then it's gonna be something ominous and I'm not happy with that. 
Light began to sneak its way into the box. Wow, can you do this much slower? I stole a hesitant glance inside and... Well, at least he didn't... For a second I was like, well, at least he's not gonna scream and... Uh, then he screamed. Kyoko's advice was no use. I let out a trembling cry. Poor boy. Oh shit. He was killed. That's the headmaster. He was killed. A shot to the head, or a very, very hard blow to the head. Someone killed him. What was in the box? It was bones. Human bones. It was the last thing I expected to find in such a bright, joyful box. Well, like I said again, considering the school, that's kind of par for the course. I mean, who could have possibly imagined? I see. Just as I thought. What? Wait, 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 whoa, 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 hold on there. Just as you thought? How could you have known that? I mean, there were bones in there. Human bones. Wrong. Well, it's not that I was thinking of the bones specifically. It's just I had a feeling it would be his body. That's pretty much the same thing. A dead guy in a box. My father. Oh, yeah. What about him? Correct. What you found in the box? Those bones. That body. That's my father. Or at least what's left of him. Are you serious? This is Kyoko's dad? The same man she's been searching for? Hold on, how can you know that for sure? How do you know that's him? So... Given all the information we already have, that's the only possible answer. So that same person may very well be the mastermind who planned all this out. And according to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late 30s. It seems possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in the school right now. <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach, I know, but okay, enough puns. Anyway, here's a hint. I'm sure I told you this already, but... This killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only people to take a single step in Hope's Peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. Well, thinking about it like that, I guess... Alter Ego said that the headmaster is probably here in the school. But the only ones who were alive at the start of the killing game were us 16 students. When you put those two ideas together, it doesn't take much to assume. Jeez, okay. In other words. That most likely my father was in the school, but he was also dead. That's my assumption anyway. As Kyoko explained her analysis, she was completely calm. Or no, she wasn't calm. She was only trying to seem calm. She said it was just as she thought, so she knew it was a possibility. But I have to believe at some point she wanted to be proven wrong. Which is why she never looked in the box herself, even though she had plenty of chances. I know Kyoko said she wanted to see her father so she could cut off all ties. But was that all there was to it? I gave up some of that pride. In order to enter Hope's Peak, I had to reveal myself to the school. Oh wow. I did it knowing it was something a true Kirikiri detective would never do. Would she really give up her pride just for that? I couldn't help but wonder. I think part of her actually maybe wanted to try reconnecting with her dad, or f at least find out why he did what he did. Okay. Jeez. This is fucking rough. Huh? This picture. Oh! It's all faded. It must be pretty old. Wait, is this a picture of... Hey, Kyoko? Why would you? Well, this is annoying. I came here to cut myself free of the past, and yet... To now find something like this. So what do you expect me to do now? Then I was right. It's a picture of Kyoko when she was a little girl. Knowing the headmaster had this picture all this time. He must have really cared about her. Why? He had his reasons probably for doing what he did. Why? What? I wanted to face him and tell him myself to cut him out of my life for abandoning me. That's the whole reason I came here. And now he's abandoned me again. And this time, he even stole the only opportunity I had to move on. Has there ever been a worse father? 
Kyoko? Damn, man, that's that's hard. Well, the only other thing in here is desks. So let's check it out. The headmaster's desk. It's probably hiding some kind of clue, so I really want to check it out, but I really don't want to touch Kyoko's dad's desk without her permission. Hey. Don't worry about me. Feel free to look around as much as you like. Are you sure? Because... Never let anything get in the way of the investigation. I don't. Okay then, if you don't mind. Starting from the top, I opened all the desk drawers and looked inside. I rummaged through each one, finding nothing but unrelated documents. But in the last drawer... Oh! Huh? Is this...? It's an e-handbook, right? And it has a label on it that says, in case of emergency. I'd found some kind of emergency handbook in the headmaster's desk. In other words... A handbook with no limitations, given to the school's ultimate authority, the headmaster. I'm assuming that's what it is? I think you're probably right. It would seem... It might prove useful as we continue our investigation. Why don't you hold on to it? Uh, but Kyoko... I... I don't need it. If you don't want it, go ahead and leave it here. Then I guess I'll take it. I think she's way more rattled about all of this than she's letting on. Is it really okay? Hmm. Hmm. Hey. Wow. Listen, Makoto? Huh? Can I ask you a favor? Uh, sure. A favor? What is it? So... I know it's completely unreasonable to ask you this. And I know it'll only inconvenience you that much more, but... Hey. Could you leave? Huh? Correct. Just for a little while. I just like to be alone for a bit. Kyoko, don't worry, I'm fine. I just need to calm down a little. Just I need a to get my emotions in order. Hmm. You know, Kyoko, you told me before about the relationship you had with your dad. How you're only connected by blood, not by heart and soul. But maybe that picture motivated him. Maybe he hoped to see me again one day. Is that what you were going to say? If so, it's just a theory. And this isn't an issue that can be settled with theories. That picture doesn't change the facts of what happened, what I went through. I... That problem can't be solved so easily. You're right, I'm sorry. Anyway... Once I've got myself under control, I'll return to the investigation immediately. So please, just give me some time myself. Okay, I understand. Then I'll see you later. That's... Kind of painful, actually. And I think despite everything, knowing her dad had her picture, I think that may have touched her a lot harder than she wants to admit. Is she really okay? Yoga, it must have been a complete shock to her. I mean, it was a shock to me. To find out what happened to the headmaster. There's no doubt the mastermind performed that evil deed. So now basically we have another murder to figure out. They killed the headmaster, killed Kyoko's father. They killed him. The headmaster is dead. The one leading the Hope's Peak staff, the one who finalized the plan to isolate you, was the Hope's Peak headmaster. So that same person may very well be the mastermind who plotted all this out. And according to the files, the headmaster man is a man in his late 30s. It seems possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in the school right now. I think he may have come up with a plan to isolate everyone, but he didn't come up with a plan to kill anyone. But we were wrong about that. The, ma the headmaster wasn't the mastermind. Which means the mastermind's true identity is... <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach, I know, but... Okay, enough puns. Anyway, here's a hint. I'm sure I told you this already, but... This killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only people to take a single step in Hope's Peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. 15 of us met in the main hall. Add Mukuro to the mix and you get 16. And including me, only 6 of us are still alive. Everyone else is dead. Even Mukuro. Even she's undeniably dead. 
So the ones still left alive are me, Byakuya, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and Kyoko. Only those six people are still alive. Then there's no question. Wait, no, that can't be. I refuse to believe it. There has to be some other way. There just has to be. Yeah, I don't know. Out of the six people still alive, well, five people excluding us still alive, Yasu won't murder anyone because he couldn't even properly kill Sakura. Come on. Toko won't murder anyone because the only boys left are Hiro, who genocide Jill basically does counts as stupid and she only kills certain types of boys. Byakuya she's obsessed with and us she... I think she might have a mild respect for us, so that counts her out. Byakuya won't kill anyone at this point because it's going to destroy his little idea of a game, even though he gave that up when with the last trial. And... Kyoko, she's way too into trying to do her own thing to want to kill anyone that's... because that's gonna jeopardize it. Hina... Hina has too much of a sense of honor of types to want to do anything. So it's kind of weird, but you know what? We got the headmaster's little book. His handbook. Let's check this out. Let's see what's going on. Because now we can actually open all of these lockers and I want to see what's inside of them. I wonder if I can open this locker. Nope, locked. Ah! Headmaster's card. Yeah, yeah. And you have to use... So does that mean... Well, let's just give it a try. I took out my handbook and ran it across the reader and then just... No luck. Maybe... Wait, but... What about that emergency handbook I found in the headmaster's hidden room? Okay, let's give it one more try. I took the emergency handbook and ran that across the card reader and... Ba-bing! Right, just what I was hoping for. Now, let's see what we got inside. This locker is totally disorganized. Yasu's? Whoever it belongs to probably has organization problems in every part of their life. That crystal ball, this, this totally looks like something Yasu would have. This is a crystal ball. A crystal ball? No, it can't be. There's no way he ever used this locker. It's just not possible. Is this a deck of playing cards? No, they're tarot cards. But wait, aren't those used for fortune telling? It's just a coincidence, right? There's all kinds of textbook and notebooks stacked and up in no particular order and dust everywhere. I have to assume whoever this- whoever stuff this is didn't do a lot of studying. Not that I can really talk. Try and act as casual and natural as possible. I picked up one of the notebooks I saw. But the moment I looked inside the notebook, any sense of ease- easiness I may have had evaporated. Oh shit! This is just getting weirder and weirder. What? There was no denying what I saw. Inside the notebook was written, Yasuhiro Hagakure. Is this our Yasuhiro? The notebook also contained a large number of notes for a variety of different classes. Which would mean... He attended classes here? No, that can't be possible. I mean, Hiro came to this school at the same time as the rest of us. And we were all sucked into this evil world. We never had the chance to take any classes. So, what is this notebook? Huh... If this is just one of them, I need to check out the others for sure. Okay, so that's yes. Wait, so that means all of these others, other lockers, could be potentially for students who are already killed. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So each time a, someone was killed, a locker was destroyed. And the ones that were bolted were for other students that were already dead a while ago. I took the emergency handbook and ran that across the card reader. And... Yeah, looks like the locker opened. Now let's see what we've got inside. I don't see anything that might be a clue. Oh, interesting. Next! Okay, that's gonna be the same text. 
Oh, this thing is practically empty. What's this thing? There's just one thing. Some kind of pocketbook? I don't see a name written on it, so I can't say for sure whose it is. But there's some writing inside. It could be important. I don't like violating the owner's privacy, but I'd better take a look. It looks like a girl's handwriting. And all the, all the letters are spaced out evenly, like whoever wrote them was measuring them. Whoever wrote this must have been really meticulous. Huh? I was flipping through the pocketbook and my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw something familiar written there. Words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak into a shelter and isolate the students here in a communal life. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. I think it's Kyoko's. It just so happens to be the headmaster. Oh shit, I didn't even read that. And my father. He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. The point is to keep our students prodigies... The point is to keep our student prodigies safe. To keep them as our hope for the future. Only their genius can overcome disaster. And only their hope can overcome despair. For the future of our country, our world. It's not an exaggeration to call this our final hope. We must isolate our superior youth from the corrupted world to serve as the foundation for a new era. This is the only hope we have. I hope that you'll be willing to go along with this plan. So that's what my father had to say to me. As usual, he made a selfish decision without consulting anyone else. I can't imagine a worse father. Oh, this can't be true, can it? But I knew it was, and I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko. It can be anyone else. But if this belongs to Kyoko, what was it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she already told me. She said she hasn't seen her dad since he left when she was little. Someone's been fucking with their memories. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. Someone has been messing with their memories. I mean, remember all those photos we saw before of them all being in happier times and even some of them who weren't friends now being friends then? What does this all mean? I quickly scanned the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would prove me wrong about this whole thing. But when I reached the last page, the question marks springing through my mind just started spinning that much faster. When I looked at it, Unlike the rest of the pocketbook, the writing here was messy, disorganized, scrawled. Despair walks among us and so we survive. There's a second despair. What is this? What does this mean? I have no idea. How could this possibly make any sense? I feel like it's pointing out that... The second despair? Second mastermind? I don't know, this, this is really weird. But the more I see, the less sense it makes. Because these lockers, I mean, they had to belong to the previous students, right? So why am I seeing this? Why are there things in the lockers that look like they belong to people here? A notebook that seems like it belongs to Hiro. A pocketbook that seems like it belongs to Kyoko. There has to be some kind of explanation. But if I want to find out, I have to keep moving the investigation forward. And I have to believe in everyone. Okay, so we check this this one. No, it's this one. Hmm. Nope, don't see anything that could be a clue. How about this one? I don't see anything that might be a clue. Alright, you got one last one and that one's over there. I don't see anything that might be a clue. Okay, these ones are pretty much busted. There's nothing we can do about this. I can't imagine any way to get this locker open. I'm never gonna bother trying. Okay, 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 okay. So the last place we couldn't get, or we could get into, but we couldn't really do anything was the data center. So, map. Uh, hallway. School store, AV room, main hall. Uh. Archive? Library. That's a classroom, I forgot about that. Physics lab, nope. Rec room. Class, class, 
This way. Art room. No. Uh, data center. There we go. Hey, it's nice that they actually kind of point that out to me. It was kind of kind of them. Okay, because as far as we know, there's a room here at the back. So, with Monokuma's key and also with the, the, the pocketbook. Hey, Makoto. Uh, handbook. We should be able to do something. Ah, Makoto, are you here to look around too? Is that what you're doing here? Mm. Yeah, I can't help but wonder about that Monokuma door. Yeah. So I figured if all the doors in the school had been unlocked, that one should be open too, right? But... Although, I couldn't bring myself to open it. Because, I mean... Wow, okay. Because it might explode, right? And that'll, that'll really suck. So, you open it. Wow! I'm sure she didn't mean it, but she made it sound like she was okay with me getting blown up. <laughs> wow! 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 I like, I like how you're trying to get me killed. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I guess I'll open it. Oh, wait, let me take cover first. I don't want to get exploded. Wow. Gee, thanks. Hina raced over to a nearby desk and hid underneath it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the, the, I feel so great about this. Thanks, Hina. This is wonderful. This is fabulous. Everything will be okay, right? All right, here goes nothing. I threw all my weight into it, but the door opened much easier than I expected. I'm actually surprised it's open. What the? There was no explosion, thankfully. My first impression was... Huh? Whoa, this place is totally sci-fi. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Jeez. Okay. It's not a lot to actually look around, but let's start from the bottom. Hmm, there's some kind of hatch on the floor. But right now, I'm more concerned about that weird device. There's some fancy looking chair there. What is this device? It looks like some kind of control panel. It's really over the top though. Like some kind of military installation or something. Mm. Yeah, it kind of looks like a mech cockpit, right? Ifumi would probably freak out if he saw it. Cockpit? So the Monokuma room has a control panel that looks like some kind of cockpit? Could then could that mean it? Okay. Alright, let's start poking at it or whatever. I'm gonna start pushing buttons. Hold on, you can't just whatever or something like this. But it was too late. You know was already jabbing away at the control panel. Huh? Huh? Did you hear that? Yeah, I think it came from the other room. You know, what did you push? <laughs> I'm not totally sure, but I think it was that one. The one that says data center? Data center? I took a good look at the control panel, and I saw a bunch of buttons, each with the same with the name of a room next to it. And just like Hina said, there was one labeled data center. That must be the one she pushed. But the data center, that's right next door. The room we were just in, that's where the strange noise came from. I'd better go check it out. Yeah! Yes, please, I'm kind of scared out of my mind right now, so I'll just cheer you on from over here. Gee, thanks, Hina. I wonder, do you, do you have anything else to say? Okay. Wow, thanks. That's supposed to make me feel better. Yeah. Okay, fine. Fine, but let's just go back and see what happens. Though that noise usually means it's Monokuma. Did I just hear what I think I heard? Ah, uh, yeah, it's the bear. Is that Monokuma? Um... So she summoned him? Uh, hey! Ah! Give me all your donuts! Huh? Is that you, Hina? Wah -wah? What? Oh man, busted! How did you know? Say what? Anyway, what is this? Some kind of remote control camera kind of setup? You don't even know what you're controlling? Hello. Well... <laughs> but, okay, that got me. Well, oh, man, I can't really see anything from in here. Found it! Ah, guess what I found? A self-destruct button. Whatever you do, don't push it! Too bad! Oh man! Are you seriously gonna push it? Anyway, I guess that settles it. The room with the Monokuma drawing on it and the control panel inside... We're all to control Monokuma! Ah. Whoa! Hey, Makoto, what the heck was that just now? Monokuma. Huh? What do you mean? What you were controlling just now. It was Monokuma. Huh? Monokuma? Oh. What? For real? Yup, it looks like that panel definitely controls Monokuma. 
which means the mastermind has been controlling Monokuma from this room. Yeah, they're definitely in here. The mastermind has been controlling Monokuma from this room. This control room is totally separate from the data center area with all the monitors. In other words... Hey. Maybe the mastermind can monitor us and control Monokuma at the same time. That actually makes more sense now. Kyoko's theory was right. But, but if the mastermind has been controlling Monokuma from here, that means they've been inside the school this whole time, right? I guess that would have to be true. But if that is true... <laughs> I feel like I'm reading this one a lot. Mm. Okay, enough puns. Anyway, here's the end. I'm sure I told you this already, but... A skilling game again with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only people to take a step inside here in Hope's Peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. And the mastermind, Monokuma's puppeteer, really is a 16th student. Hmm. No, it can't be. There's no way, right? Hmm. Um, What's wrong, Makoto? I don't like the face you're making. Oh no, it's nothing. Okay? What about you? Is everything okay? I mean... Oh, well, it's just... This is where the mastermind's been hiding, right? Who knows if they set up traps or something? I can't say it isn't possible, but I really hope it's not true. Um, so like... So, um, if you wanna leave soon, there's still lots of other, other places to check out. Yeah, good point. We can't waste all our time standing around here. Okay, you want to get going? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's sleep. What the? As soon as the door to the data center was closed, I heard a strange sound. What was that? Uh, the door just locked on its own. What? My hand shot out to grab the doorknob. Wow, you're right, it's locked. But why? <laughs> of course it's locked because they, the data center is restricted now. Monokuma! Just a second! Hey, no fear, you can't just go around restricting whatever you feel like. Hey, um... It's for your benefit. Because if that room stays open, I won't be able to move around. <laughs> Imagine how depressed everyone would get if the school mascot just up and stopped moving. Then that room... Yep. As you may have guessed, that's where my controls are. Um... So, right now you're being operated by someone in that room? Yes, indeed! Correct the mundo! You're a liar! But that doesn't make any sense! We were just in there and we didn't see anyone. The hatch on the floor. <laughs> oh, you didn't, did you? Are you sure you were as thorough as you could have been? <laughs> did you happen to check a certain suspicious hatch? No way! The hatch on the floor? <laughs> Too bad, that was your one big chance and you blew it. Too bad. Of course, that hatch can't be opened from the outside anyway, so whatever. Hmm. Now then, this room is officially restricted, so no more investigating. I'll be relying on you guys to tell the others. Yeah. Peace! Um... You little weirdo. He's gone, but... So, um... Was he telling the truth? The mastermind was hiding in there? In fact, if you think back to when we got locked out of the control room, that proves it for sure. Huh? Then, when I said we should leave, well, that hatch couldn't be opened from the outside anyway, right? So it's not your fault. Sorry. Uh, okay. Anyway, we don't have to let it get to us. Yeah, for some reason I got stuck there. We have to stay positive and make the most of the time we have left. You're right. There's one thing I'm good at, it's keeping my body moving. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go run around and tell everyone what we found here. Nice. You've got me all motivated again. You got it. Okay, I'm out. See you later. Tina took off at a full sprint. And I have to do what I can too. That's the only way forward. Okay, so the only other thing I can think of is the headmaster's place. I wonder if it's gonna give me any more exclamations. Mm, no, we've already been in there. Headmaster, there we go. Because we won't be able to go into the into there now at this point anyway because of Monokuma. Let's see what's in here. Well, we know Bar Byakuya is in here, so that's fine. Wow. This is messy. This is the headmaster's room. I've heard an awful lot about it, but this will be my first time seeing it for myself. Hmm. 
Ah, Makoto, it's you. Oh, Byokyo. So, um, hmm. No, let's talk to him first. I kind of missed out last time. Oh, we came to the right place this time. Would you like to see something interesting? Interesting? What do you mean, something interesting? Take a look at this. It was on top of that pathetically ostentatious disc. <laughs> wow, coming from you, Byakuya, that's almost odd. Okay. Class number 78, student registry. <laughs> it contains profiles for all of us and Mukuro. So in other words... Apparently class 78 refers to us. Wait, when we found Mukuro's profile in Kyoko's room... I see. That's right, it also mentioned class number 78. This must be where Kyoko got that page. And since the rest of our profiles are listed in there along with hers, in other words, there can be no doubt. Mukuro was a student here at Hope Speak Academy, just like the rest of us. Mukuro Ikasawa, the 16th student. That must be how Kyoko learned about it. But it seems that Kyoko was in a hurry. What? What do you mean? I'm talking about when she stole it. Ooh. The uneven tearing, the way the paper had been crumpled, she must have been in a hurry. Well, since she snuck in to get it, I'm sure she wanted to get out as fast as possible. But what's your point? <laughs> she was in so much of a hurry that she only got the first page. The first page? Hmm. Correct. Mukuro's profile actually contains two pages. What? So, in other words... In other words, when it comes to this profile, there was more information about Mukuro that we still didn't have. What? What kind of information is it? Why do you ask me to explain every little thing? You can read, can't you? It seems to be some sort of detailed report put together by the headmaster himself. Hm. I don't know what kind of man he was, but I'm glad he left us such an interesting clue. I was only half listening to Byakuya as I skimmed through the report. Mukuro re reappeared suddenly and in the background, an ent entity floats. Close, but just out of reach. The entity known as the Ultimate Despair. Right now, I can't be sure if this is a single person or some kind of group. Whatever it is, Mukuro definitely has some sort of connection to it. I have a bad feeling about all this. I need to push forward with my research into the Ultimate Despair. And I need to pay attention to Mukuro's behavior too. This is just my gut feeling, but I think she's dangerous. Despite the countless battles she must have gone through as a member of Fenrir, when she entered Host Peak, she didn't display any signs of battle wounds or scars. That fact alone proves her tremendous skill in battle. Naturally, I want to believe in her. She's one of my students, after all. But if I decide she's a danger to the other students, I'll be forced to take all reasonable measures. Mukuro was a part of the ultimate despair. I don't think there can be any doubt about it now. But wouldn't that mean Mukuro and the Mastermind were allies? So why... Why would they kill Mukuro? Maybe to keep their secret? Plus, even the headmaster seemed afraid of what Mukuro was capable of. They would have had to take her completely by surprise to kill her like that. Or maybe it means the mastermind is even stronger than Mukuro was. What? What's wrong, Makoto? Huh? That's fine. You seem to be lost in thought, but I should probably point out one other thing. There's another important bit of information in that file that you should note. What is it? Did you notice the picture in there? A picture of a girl perhaps you've never seen before. <laughs> a girl who seems to be included as part of our class number 78. That should be enough for you to figure out who the girl is. Oh, that's her face. And further information about that girl is included in the file. 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds, and it even lists her vitals. 31, 22, 32. <laughs> well, what do you think? What do I think? Are you asking me, like, if she has a nice body? Stop talking. You hopeless idiot. What I'm trying to tell you is, maybe you'll want to keep that in mind for later. Maybe you'll make your way back to the corpse and maybe you'll think, Oh, could that mean... Wait, is he trying to say? There's a chance the body isn't actually Mukuro? Is that what he's saying? Personally, what I'm thinking seems all but impossible, but it wouldn't hurt to confirm, right? It's all clear now. That's all I was trying to say. What you do with that information is your business. So I'm back to being Byakuya's errand boy. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. 
Oh, and one last thing. It's a bit of advice for me to use, so I suggest you pay attention. Sure. Advice for me. You seem to be getting along with Kyoko quite well. It's not that we're getting along, she's just done a lot to help me. Well, don't put too much faith in her. Huh? In other words, the cost of that faith might be more than you can afford. What are you saying? <laughs> just what I think. Call it a hunch. A hunch? <laughs> but my hunches tend to be proven right. The advice is for you this time. Take it or don't, as you will. I'll keep it in mind. Thanks. Okay. So I'm still gonna check out this desk because of that file over there. Student registry. Apparently that's us. It has profiles of me and everyone I met at the beginning, and Mukuro. Just like us, Mukuro was apparently a new student here at Hope Speak. Mukuro Ikasaba, part of the ultimate despair. Which means her and the headmaster and the mastermind should have been allies. But then why would the mastermind kill her? Weren't they friends? There are documents scattered all over the floor. Someone makes me feel anxious. Uh what's this? There are some trophies and even a shield in the display case. Okay, I feel like there's not much more to do. So one of the other places I'm gonna go check out is the dojo. No. Wait, wasn't it the bio lab that I also couldn't go into? Why do I keep pressing Y? I couldn't go into the bio lab either for some reason. What's this? Garden bio lab. There we go. I want to see what's in there because last time we couldn't get in here. This is war. <laughs> war. Oh. Could this maybe be where Mukro was hiding? It's an odd place. Well, here I'm in the bio lab. It's so cold. It's like abnormally cold. I feel like I'm in a giant refrigerator. Seriously, why is it so cold? Oh shit. Oh shit. Um. Okay, I'm not gonna look at that. But let's look at this first. Let's start from left to right. There's a stack of tarps here. I've been seeing a lot of those things lately. Hmm. Check out the table. Ugh, so cold. Why is it so cold in here? That's the first thing I need to figure out. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to look at these then. There's some kind of weird machine or something built into the wall. Those look like... Morgue places, he's saying. And on the left side, there's a bunch of glowing blue lights. But on the other side... There's some kind of weird machine, so blah, blah, blah. I've seen something like this before. And that's it, I've seen this kind of thing in horror movies and stuff. It's a fridge for storing dead bodies. Does that mean the, this bio lab is actually a morgue? I should probably take a closer look around. Ooh. Okay, now I'm starting to feel like things are getting a new meaning. Oh, there's some kind of booklet here. Looks like an instruction manual. We offer an eco-friendly alternative to standard dry ice for all your cadaver needs. In addition to the germicidal lamps, we also provide an ozone generator for the removal of ethylene gas. Simply insert the cadaver and the blue light will let you know the automated systems have activated. Temperatures and humidity levels will be adjusted automatically for optimum settings. With our system, anyone can keep a body as fresh as a daisy for as long as you need. That does not sound like a good thing. In the end, the unlikely event of a problem, the red light will activate and an alarm will sound immediately. The exterior is stainless steel, and we do offer an optional leather upholstery upgrade package. What? This is the instructional manual for a fridge? Uh, okay, yeah. So... Huh? There's some kind of a machine or something built in the wall, and on the left side there's a bunch of blue lights, but only the, some of the lights are on. The ones on the left. The right hand lights are off. Six. So that's for each one for each of us. The right hand lights are off. Well, looking around, I think I get it. it. Seems clear to me now. It was a makeshift morgue. Okay, and about those lights by each slot. It looks like it's set up so that when a slot is occupied, the blue light comes on. Which would mean, inside each slot lit up in blue, another one of the victims is... Huh. 
I can't let my emotions take control right now. There's only one thing I can do for everyone who's dead. And that's defeat the mastermind. And to do that, I have to continue my investigation. I don't have any other option. Alright, I'm gonna get out of here. So, a lot of the places that we may have sort of went through in the first beginning stages of the game, I'm kind of gonna leave out. Because... I feel like... Um... We've already basically seen as much as we can about them from previous investigations and stuff and it's not like anything occurred in there that could give us a clue so i think the next part i'm gonna head off to is the dojo that's the bio lab that's the garden that's the dojo you know what since they're right across from each other i'm just gonna you know what i'm gonna go in here first because since toko's in here maybe she can give me some insight Oh, Toka, so this is where you were. What do you want? Wow. Am I so disgusting you want me out of your sight? No, that's not it at all. I just thought maybe you'd find a clue. Well, I haven't. I didn't find anything. Not a, not one single clue. I figured since this place was related to case, it would have to have something, right? But there wasn't anything out of the ordinary here. <laughs> give it back, give me back my precious time. Calm down, Toko. What's your problem? Oh god. Don't tell me to calm down. Do you have any idea what I'm going through right now? When everyone finds out, they're gonna call me useless. Good for nothing. Nobody's gonna say that. <laughs> Master Wolf? I'm not sure I can disagree with that. <laughs> I don't want that. I'm sick of always being looked down. Why won't anyone accept me? Wow. <laughs> it's not that we don't accept you. You're a little strange. You're housing a murderer in your head. <clears throat> um, well, I don't think there are any clues here, so maybe I'm gonna get going. Uh, I don't think there is anything new here. Yeah, sure. So, let's head back for the garden. Okay. Um... Huh? It's gone. Mukuro's body. It's not here? Well, I mean, we already established there's a makeshift morgue in the bio lab, so... And everything seems pretty fine here, but I'm curious about that pickaxe and shit that was in the tool shed the first time. Because the pickaxe had uh, Mondo's name on it. Maybe the body is inside the tool shed? I'd better check just to be sure. I didn't find anything even close to a dead body. But if it's not in here either, there must be... Could it be in the bio lab? But corpses aren't the only thing I need to check in here. There's one other thing. That tarp. The tarp played a key role in another case, so I'd better look into it. I think this could be the same kind of tarp that came from the bio lab. The killer used the tarp to keep the sprinklers from getting the body wet. Which means the killer might have left some clue behind here. Huh? Yeah, it's from the bio lab. I didn't notice this before, but there's a small stamp on one corner of the tarp. It says bio lab. Then this one originally came from a bio lab. More proof that it wasn't any of us that did it, because we didn't have access to the bio lab until now. And I want to take a look at this. No, not those! Hose. Is there anything that sticks out about them? No matter how loud I look, I don't see anything. I want to look at this one. Is that... It's that pickaxe. On the handle it says, Crazy Diamond. It's the same thing that was written on the back of Mondo's coat. This pickaxe is connected to Mondo somehow. Strange. Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's anything else in here that we can look at, so I'm gonna head out. That's all I really need to check here. Oh, well, thank you, Nim Makoto. I, I didn't know that was gonna happen. What? Um, okay. Um, this is a school announcement. 
Is everyone working hard? Is your investigation coming along nicely? Well then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. Wow. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, please make your way to the gym ASA possible. <laughs> what? Now he wants to give us a hint? It's suspicious, there's no doubt about that. That could be this could be a trap. But even knowing that, hmm. He said to go to the gym, right? Well, I mean, I guess we should find out what he wants and get it over with. Oh, hey, hero. <laughs> Makoto? Why'd you act so surprised? Uh, um... Oh, no reason. You heard Monokuma's announcement, right? Are you here to find out what he has to say? <sighs> I... Uh, I... I just did, actually. I'm on my way out. You really talked to him? What did he say? Hmm. Listen, sorry, but I... I gotta go. Here, wait! There's no point in trying to stop him. He ran off like a frightened animal. Hero? It was like he was trying to avoid me. I was hoping to talk to him about the notebook I found in the locker. Has he been hiding something this whole time? Whatever Monokuma said actually freaked him out, I think. Hmm. I am Monokuma! Hello, welcome, welcome, hello. Are you ready for your final hint? Well, it just so happens to be in the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope? This one? This must be the envelope. <laughs> and just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? <laughs> Don't worry, just get on with it. Hmm. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better, but I picked up the envelope and opened it. What I found was a single photograph. It featured a bunch of faces I recognized extremely well. It was everyone who'd come to Hope Speak at the same time as me. Ah, oh, I just noticed something. Junko's face is closed off. Why is hers blocked out? It was everyone who'd come to Hope Speak at the same time as me. Wait, but... There's someone behind Sayaka. She's the only one I don't recognize. That's Mukuro. Hey, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Byakuya and I were in the headmaster's room and we looked at that file. Mukuro Ikusaba. And this girl is... What? Why? Why is Mukuro here with everyone else? And even more than that... Just having everyone you pose like this is weird enough by itself. And we're all wearing matching uniforms. I don't remember anything like this. And now that I'm looking at it, it's not even everyone. I'm not in the picture. Huh. I'm the only one not there. The picture has all 15 other students, but not me. But I guess it makes sense. After all, I don't remember ever taking a picture like this. I went to junior high with Sayaka, but the first time I met everyone else was when I arrived here at Hope Speak Academy. So it's natural for me to not be in this picture. But what's definitely unnatural is that everyone else is in this picture. I thought everyone was like me and didn't know each other till they got here. But if this picture is real, then could that mean? Could it be? Everyone else isn't just me? Everyone here except me is. <laughs> How long are you going to keep up this rambling sl what sl soliloquy of yours? Whoa, that's a bit of an interesting word. What are you going to do? You're kind of getting in the way standing there, you know. Hmm. So, I mean, get out. You know, I'm, I'm the type of person where if I don't understand a word, I'm probably going to Google it and I'm going to Google how to pronounce it. <sighs> yeah, my brain works weird in that way. I told you I'm not feeling any questions. Unbelievable. What kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answers? That'd be totally out of left field. 
Well, uh, uh, I guess that means he's done talking. Damn it. So in the end, all I found in the gym was, an e was even more confusion. And with that confusion in hand, I left the gym, left the gym dejected. Okay. I kind of feel like I need to go find someone, but I think my best bet... Kyoko's kind of unavailable. Hiro is... Uh, blanked. Hina? I'm not sure where she is, so I think I'm gonna go look for Byakuya. How does that count as a hint? It just made me even more confused. Is that what Monokuma was going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? That seemed likely, but it's... I don't know. I'll put this one in the back pocket for now. Because the fact that Junko's face is covered, that kind of bugs me. Because if a photo is usually taken of everyone, no matter how weird it is, people generally try and get the other people's faces in them. I mean, even... Yeah. I don't know. But it looks surreal. So full of life. How could anyone fake that? Which would mean everyone but me. Maybe I should just ask everyone directly. That should clear all this up. No, I have to clear all this up. I right, let's let's go looking for someone. Though Bianca usually hangs out in the library, so I guess it means he could be in the archive. No. Hmm. You know what? Let's let's just start here and get it over with. Let's start with Hina and hear what she has to say. She's in the dining hall. And just work our way up because it's probably going to give an exclamation for everyone that's in a room. So this is where you've been hiding. Listen, I was hoping to talk to you. Oh, Makaru! Okay. Sorry, you gotta go. What? She ran so fast, I didn't even have time to ask her to stop. Hina? Why? Why would you talk to me? What the hell? Uh, okay. So, she's not in here anymore. There's no one there. No one there. He's in the library, so let's go to that door. Uh, no. Library, and then we enter archives so we can talk to Byakuya. See what he has to say. Oh, Byakuya. Hmm? Listen, do you think we could talk? Byakuya? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Byakuya, wait! But of course he didn't, he just walked away. What the? Why was he acting like that? Like he was purposely trying to avoid me. I feel like that photo is the same for everyone. Either they aren't showing up in the photo, or Makoto is removed from the photo so that Makoto is looking more like the mastermind, the guilty party. Okay. Anyone in here? Nope. Anyone over here? Nope. Aha! So there's someone in the garden, and there's someone in the bio lab. Let's start with the garden. Because Toko, Toko's kind of... Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. I want to avoid talking to, 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 to Toko as long as I can. To Toko? What the fuck? Oh, hey, hero. You gonna freak out too? Hey, hero. Oh, Makoto. What's going on with you? Every time I see you, you freak out like that. Uh, um, no, I... Uh, uh, no, sorry, but I'm in a big hurry. Once again, he ran off like a terrified rabbit. Hero, what's wrong? I still wasn't able to talk to him about the notebook I'd found. It was like he was avoiding me. Like he was afraid of me. Why? Yeah, I legit think... The mastermind came up with something. To throw people on t to... Makoto's trail, like he's the bad person. 
which wouldn't be a bad tactic because so far Makoto and Kyoko are the two that are figuring a lot out and despite what Kyoko might think Makoto has helped her a lot in her own investigation into things she wouldn't have gotten where she is without him I decided to visit the bio lab one more time and the first thing I saw when I got there was her passed out again uh Toko Oh shit, she was looking at this. Well, that explains it. It's open. Oh, but Toko. Uh. Toko, are you okay? No, no. She's not dead, is she? <laughs> of course, you make an appearance. Uh. It's cold. It's super cold. It's so cold. I don't think. I think I might catch cold. If you keep taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. I see. What? I was asleep? Oh, I must have fainted again. Uh -huh. I bet you were standing there, staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? No. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Uh -huh. Oh, then what? Hot and bothered? <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, then what? Hot and bothered? Straight up horny. Uh, okay, so why did you pass out? <laughs> I don't know. Last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What did you do to Miss Moroz? Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. <laughs> Bingo bazinga. We share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. SOB. And don't say it like it's a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> even if she forgets something, I totally remember. Yes. So it's like double the memory. Uh, no, it's more like half. But all I want to know right now is where's my little darling? Tell me now, I'll slit your throat. No, I don't know. I'm sure Biako's around here swimming, doing his own investigation. Mm, yes. By himself? Yes. I assume so. Oh, I knew fire. it. I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. <laughs> anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't even imagine how lonely he must be right now. <laughs> okay. Bye. Toko shut off her eerie laughter echoing behind her. Oh, I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point asking Genocide Jack anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Toko faint? There's gotta be some reason for it. Yeah, my cat might be a little bratty today. She's being a little needy. The fridge, it's open. But I'm sure they were all shut tight last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. Right. Damn, woman! She faints so easily. Kyoko! Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't have to apologize. Listen. But listen about this room. Oh yeah, it's... It would seem... It's a morgue. Yeah. I knew it. I suspected as much. And Toko must have looked inside the fridge, seen what was in there and... Well, there you have it. You knew she'd faint it? Indeed. I was on my way here when Jin inside Jack came running past me. I assume she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. It would seem... I imagine she came here to investigate, and when she opened the slot there, that's when she saw the body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Why does everything gotta be so difficult with her? Anyway... We should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, good idea. Makoto. Give me a hand with this. Kyoko approached the fridge, hands outstretched. But suddenly, she stopped. What's wrong? Listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. Huh? How come? Because Mukro's body is in here. Oh, damn! Mukro's corpse? Mukro's body is inside the fridge? I see. Just like every other time, the mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the class trial. The mastermind did it? Because they assumed we wouldn't be doing the tri class trial over again, I guess. So... You may be right. Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. Oh, that's right. Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. Makoto. I need to do my own investigation of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then... Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there? That's it? Okay... There's a fridge meant for storing dead bodies. I can't do it, I can't look inside. Uh, so... Well, let's just check stuff again. On the left side of the fridge, a bunch of blue lights. Red, but those it ones aren't. Seem... 
It would seem the blue light comes on when the slot is occupied. So when someone's in there, the blue light comes on. Looking around, the number of lights that are on, including Mokuro's, there's nine in all. Wait, isn't there supposed to be ten if there's sixteen of us and ten's already dead? Someone faked their death. Nine. Nine lights? Someone faked their death. Someone's not dead because there's supposed to be ten dead. Because first it was Saika. Junko. Yeah, there's supposed to be ten. There's six of us left. What? You know, I think I've seen a tarp like this somewhere before. Ah, it's the same as the one I found in the garden tool shed. And if I remember that tarp, it had a stamp on that said BioWeb. And that's a tarp that was used to help camouflage the murder in the garden. At some point, someone got it from the biolab and took it over there. Again, that kind of proves that it wasn't any of the students because, well, apart from Kyoko, which we know she didn't do it because she's too busy with her own investigation, it couldn't be hers and it couldn't be any of us because we didn't have access to the biolab yet. You done yet? You done, girl? I should ask Kyoko about that group photo. After all, she's in it too. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about that announcement Monokuma made earlier. Ooh. You mean the one about a hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Huh? Why not? Because... The only reason it gives a hint at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgement. I can solve this mystery on my own without whatever hint he, he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing. But what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her, I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? Did the mastermind forge this picture as a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. Ooh. Thing is, I think the reason why Makoto isn't in the picture, he's the one that took it. Okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Indeed. Anyone can do good work if they go slow. And that's Bert. I'll make my report a brief. <laughs> So, did you find anything? Indeed. I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood. It, it, it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. She was already dead? Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my findings. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? Then what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, the victim's body is unknown. The identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only other option is those other wounds, but the files say they were old. Is that right? Where does it say they're old? Huh? Because. All the Monokuma file says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense, considering the impression they give. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However... But that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds, it makes it sound like they've been there forever, like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? But all we got from the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So if the wounds were at least several days old, there's no way they could have been could have had anything to do with it. So then. But what if Maramukuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very least. Certainly you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of many? Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers, there's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. In other words... They envision those these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then, as they investigate, they test what they find against each of these possibilities. <laughs> uh, of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be as any good at detective work. Wow! But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should keep it in mind for the future. Hmm. But she is- she does have a point, though, about something. We all- well, all of us in the game assume that old men- oh, several days old men just old. What kind of wounds were those? 
come to think of it, there was one thing. Earlier, when I was looking at Mukura's profile, it listed her height and weight. So, 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds, vitals were 31, 22, 32. Did I get that right? You remember all that? They're indeed consistent with the corpse. So then, indeed. And don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case is, without a doubt, Mukuro Kusaba. Hmm. And? Is that all you wanted to ask? Yeah, I think so. So then. Then it looks like we have no further business with Mukuro's body. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. Oh, wait, are we not going to put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad? Did you forget she was, she was our enemy once? A part of the ultimate despair? But she still got killed. She's still a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well, yeah, but still. <sighs> you really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me. But she decided to help me instead. So for someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? So then. I think we've done all we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Ah, hold on. I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. The pocketbook. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in that locker. If I don't do it now... Oh shit! Oh shit! Hey, Kyoko? I did have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. What? Go ahead then, out with it. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second floor of the dorms? Indeed. I do, yes. But to get in in... in uh, too. But to get into any of those lockers, you need to you need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to open them using that emergency handbook. I see. The one you found in the headmaster's hidden room? And? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belonging to belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is, there's no way I, I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense, but there was something written inside. It was about the headmaster, about your father. What? If that's true... Could that mean that video is real too? Video? Makoto. I think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Although, I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. What are you talking about? I... I need to go investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you said just said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the headmaster's handbook. That way you can... So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker? Makoto. If you watch this, it'll all make sense. A DVD? And it says class number 78, urgent interviews. So... I found it in that hidden room after you left. Anyway... I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it and see for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now. But I guess it means there's some important clue in this DVD. Okay... This is getting weirder and weirder. Oh, now it's my turn. Do you have any- do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble? In other words. So, as it turns out, the arrangements I'd made didn't stick. What I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask, for the rest of my life, and all because of the mastermind. However... But there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I... I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more three reason to follow through on that. Yoko's eyes burned with the fire of determination. <laughs> the determination to defeat the mastermind. <laughs> it's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it... Why does it bother me so, so much to know he suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. 
She let out a small laugh as she said it, but her smile was full of a sorrow. Whew. So that's it for my rambling. There's still much to do before I can consider my task complete. Yeah, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There's only ever one absolute truth. Whether that truth serves, ju serves justice or suffering. Whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you encounter is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because... Because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then... Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Leaving behind that final farewell, Kyoko was, ban was gone. I better get going myself. I got that DVD from Kyoko. I should head to the AV room and check it out. Kyoko said something about hopeless truth. But no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world. I can't afford to lose. God, okay, this is turning out longer than I thought, but considering I think we're so close to the end, I'm just gonna continue this investigation thing and continue it and get it over with. So I'm gonna head for the AV room. So let's get out of here. Oh, map! The ever faithful map. All right. Mm, AV. No, it's not gonna be here. Around here somewhere? No, it's gonna be on the next floor, I think. Uh, dorm. Nope, not that one. There's this office. There we go. So we're gonna go to that. This way, I think. Nope. Yeah, what? I'm right at the door. God damn it. All right, let's go. We haven't actually been in here a lot, have we? Okay. This should be able to play the DV play DVDs just fine. Well, then I better take a look. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. It said that it was playing, but nothing appeared on screen. I stared into the black of the monitor. It must have only been a few seconds, but to me it felt like an eternity. And then all of a sudden... An image appeared. Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Sayaka in who knows how long, and there she was. Okay then, are you ready to begin? The voice I heard was of the man positioned on one side of the screen. It was the voice of a middle-aged man. I do apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. The hell? It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Saika's tense faint just didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like... insurance. So please don't worry too much. Hmm. Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? You want me to accept that? Zack was obviously at a loss. It made total sense. Who would agree to spending the rest of your life in the school? Bye. Accept? What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. Interesting. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. Hmm, there was a lot I hadn't understood up till now. But this, only this, I simply couldn't comprehend what I'd heard. Because I know how much Saika wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad she tried to frame me for murder. So why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed a, noticed a sudden light. On the monitor, the video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes darted back to the screen. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Your own interview. Oh shit! Huh? What I saw was me. Impossibly, undeniably me. So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. Me and the Hasmi Headmaster were looking at each other. He and I were having what seemed like a fairly normal conversation. 
But I and the iron here and now had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down to talk with him like this. Now, shall we get straight to the point? Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. This can't be real. I said yes. I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, do we? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Once again, the video cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Byakuya? Toko? Hina? Everyone. They all said that they agreed to live in the school. Forever. And then? Kyoko. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She'd sat down with the headmaster of Hope Speak Academy, her father. And when he asked her his question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up, the monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just a monitor. The DVD player itself had apparently turned off. Which, of course, meant that the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Say what? You little fucking sneak. Oopsie, it looks like it broke. Out of service. What? It just uh, happened to break just now? Too bad. Now then, when doesn't matter. Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. <laughs> That's what failure is, right? You little sneak. Failure my ass. You got the power on purpose. Well, whatever. Even if I watched the whole thing, it'd just be more of the same. He'd ask them the question, and they'd all say yes. I couldn't help myself. I let out a huge exasperated sigh. But as I did... I remember something. The pocketbook. That's right. Well, I found it too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself, a disconnect. It would seem Thinking back on it now, at that point my memory was gone. That time I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to the school and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. So she had more a case of an am amnesia than the others did. Because the, for the others, they remember walking into the gates, even will remember a life beforehand. But for her, she couldn't really remember why she came to the school, whereas everyone else did. Hmm. But what can make you forget all that? Hey. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. Huh. A convenient outcome. Something that seemed oh, uh, uh, something that seemed to obviously work in favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the others? Have you all forgotten? Or hmm. Oh shit! We know what time it is, boys and girls. For anything that has a start. There has to be an end. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. You are being extremely eloquent at the moment. Although that dawn is totally pitch black. Never mind, I take it back. There is no storm that won't eventually end. Can we move this on? Of course, then that leads to drought. Yeah? But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Mm -hmm. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Get on with it, bear. Anyway, let's get started. The okay. beginning of the end of the class trial. Everyone gather once again at you know where. <laughs> It's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay then. This is the end. Let's walk up to the red door. 
And this is where we're gonna call it, guys. I kind of have a theory or two, and yeah, I don't know. This, I think this is gonna be very fucking complicated because there's a lot of shit we need to figure out. But we'll get there. We'll do it. But I feel like this is like literally near the end. I think this might be the last last trial. If it isn't, which come to think of it, there might be more. <laughs> you never know. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you had fun. And this has been a real brain twister. There's a lot going on. But we'll see you to the, through to the end. I already have Danganronpa 2. So that's going to be a thing. And yeah. Take care, everyone. I hope you look after yourself. And you know, just just relax, chill. Things don't things feel a little too much. There are professionals out there. Yeah, people that care about you. Reach out. Yell, shout, scream, whatever version of that you want to do. But, until next time, I'll see you all later.